Jesus' final words give us a glimpse into the power of prayer. Prayer is deeply woven into various religious and spiritual traditions. It manifests itself in diverse forms, some verbal, others silent, some ritualistic, others spontaneous, some communal, and others private. Prayer solves a multitude of purposes, ranging from seeking guidance and expressing gratitude to looking for comfort, solace, a connection. Yet, despite its universality, prayer remains the subject of much controversy and debate. Different religious traditions and spiritual practices hold varying perspectives on its nature and efficacy. Questions abound. Is prayer primarily about seeking specific outcomes or aligning oneself with the divine will? Does it aim to change external circumstances or transform the individual praying. Such inquiries intersect with broader theological dilemmas, including beliefs about divine providence and the problem of evil. Moreover, prayer can become contentious when it intersects with social and political issues. Congregations comprising diverse members with varying ideologies and beliefs may struggle to find common ground in communal prayer. When social or political issues are prominent, members holding different opinions might struggle as to how prayer should be addressed. Given these complexities, it is understandable why some feel paralyzed when praying. Folk may wonder, What constitutes the right way to pray? How does one approach prayer authentically? What is the purpose of prayer? And what happens if I get it wrong? Because how and why we express ourselves is important. Prayer is not just empty words or silences. They're places of contact and interaction. And prayers say who we think God is. Amidst these controversies, Jesus' final prayer before his death offers a radical paradigm. One that challenges conventional notions defies societal norms, and provides a unique perspective on authority and faith. His prayer, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, is an act of surrender and trust. Jesus relinquishes control, placing his life entirely in God's hands. In a culture that exalts autonomy and self-reliance, surrendering control can be frightening or overwhelming. Praying this way requires acknowledging vulnerability and dependency, qualities that are antithetical to the prevailing ethos of self-sufficiency. Fear of the unknown, uncertainty, may hinder many from embracing this prayer because it's rooted in giving up. And many will find that difficult. Most people desire control over their career decisions, health outcomes, and personal relationships, responsibility for one's life and and the life of others. 
leads people to resist surrendering control. I fear it's an abdication of agency, responsibility. And we have attachment to specific desires and goals, the outcomes we want to see. That further complicates this idea of surrender. Trusting in a higher power requires faith in divine wisdom and divine benevolence. Now, that may have been easy for Jesus, but individuals grappling with past betrayals or, or, or current sufferings may struggle to reconcile their lived experience with their beliefs. Despite its transformative potential, Jesus' commendation prayer is frequently deemed too risky or inadequate. To some, it feels namby-pamby, cowardly, or simply too vague. It seems better to be more in control of the narrative, to contribute to to it positively, if possible. We desire to be on the right side of good and evil, and what we say in public marks that out. Jesus' says prayer, it, it presupposes too much. It's too stark. However, in its simplicity lies its power a power that transcends the self. It challenges prayers to go beyond their own desires, to trust in a higher power, something beyond their control. With his last breath, Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. He placed his life in God's care, entrusting his very essence and all that would happen to God. He relinquished authority, influence, and power in every aspect of his life. And in a society that values strength and resilience, this may be perceived as a weakness. Relinquishing one's fate probably conflicts with prevailing personal agency narratives. But Jesus' prayer is not one of resignation. It is an act of spiritual boldness. When we surrender in prayer, we are making a decisive move. When prayed collectively, you and I, Jesus' prayer gives all who pray it the same purpose. It transcends individual concerns. By surrendering control and placing trust in God, we open ourselves to God's presence in in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. In a world fraught with horror, the prayer of surrender holds the potential for profound transformation. It promotes empathy, fosters solidarity, and inspires collective action for the common good. Indeed, if embraced fully, we might say this prayer could pave the path toward reconciliation and peace on earth. As we navigate contemporary challenges and dilemmas, Jesus' prayer of commendation stands as an invitation to trust in God 
offering solace and guidance amidst uncertainty. Embracing this prayer, no doubt, requires courage, humility, and faith. A willingness to let go and surrender. It is through this act of surrender that we will find the peace we're looking for, the freedom we want. Knowing that we are held in the embrace of the Lord Jesus, who loved the world so much that he relinquished control of his life.